Hello there, thanks for tuning in. This is a review for an Anschutz 1517.17 HMR rifle. I bought this gun about six years ago when the 17 calibre really first came over from America and got established in the UK. And as such, this gun was reasonably rare and pretty expensive. I think I paid nearly 600 quid for it. Obviously that was just the gun by itself, but the reason I went for this one is it had a factory shortened barrel. See the barrel is not very long at all. This is actually the silencer, which is an ASE Ultra, which I think at the time was about 65 quid or so. So allowing for inflation and the VAT rise is probably about 300 quid now. No, it shouldn't be much more than 65 quid, it might even be less. But uh, it's a pretty good silencer. It does not reduce the crack that comes off here because although it's a very small caliber, if you don't have a silencer on, you would think that the sky was falling in. It's really, really loud. Reasons I picked this particular gun is factory short and barrel, nice bolt, nice wide ball sort of arrangement on the end there to get a hold of. Really beautiful two stage trigger. So when you cock the gun, you've got a little bit of movement and then it stops. And you know where it stops, that's the takeoff point. As soon as you squeeze, that's when the bullet flies. Very important to have a good trigger if you want accuracy. It does come with a magazine which fits underneath there, pretty snugly. Unfortunately, the mag is only four shots, which is, is fine because it's not as if, as if you're gonna be firing off left, right and center all the time, but certain places where I go, there really is an overpopulation of rabbits. I like to sit on grassy knoll or something and take out all the rabbits on a bank side without them knowing I'm there. So you can imagine, you've got one up the spout, you take one out, two, three, four, and then you either need to bring your replacement mag out of your pocket, or you need to sit there shoveling more bullets into this one, which to be honest isn't such an encumbrance. I've actually got another mag, which I keep in my top pockets when I'm lying down, once this one's expended, take this out, plug it in. Whilst I'm looking for my shots, I'm loading up the other one. It would actually help if it had a bigger mag. The Ruger, um, the Ruger 17 HMR rifle does actually come with a 10 shot rotary mag, which in the same way as this one fits in, the Ruger fits in under here as well. But um, for whatever reason, I decided not to go with the Ruger. I just liked the feel and the size, I just liked everything about this gun. It's got a really nice stock, nice checkering. It's walnut. You'll notice the butt plate it is actually cracked at the minute. I, I cracked it about six months ago. Um, it's not spongy. It's just a flat, hard plastic butt plate. That's because there's no kick at all off this rifle. Although it does send these little projectiles whipping out at about two and a half thousand feet per second, there's no kick at all. Also, at the time of buying this gun, I got a Harris bipod. I think it's 9 to 13 inches. So you can set these at whatever height you want. The most important thing about this bipod is it allows the gun to swivel. So say you decided to take your shot and the ground wasn't quite level, obviously your bipod would sit like that but you can level your gun up by swiveling it. That is very important because you've got to have your crosshairs straight up and down to be accurate. That fits away snugly under there. I tend to leave it set at about, whoops, not that distance, at about that distance. So I can drop it out and that seems to be 
the most comfortable height for me but obviously if you've got a bipod you'll probably have it set differently some people have it set all the way in and actually pop it out when before they take the shot but to me that's unnecessary time I like to just drop it be in the right position take the shot if the grass is a little bit longer I will extend the legs out so I can get over the top of the grass but for most applications I find that setting it at this particular height serves me well. Two more things I got at the time of buying the gun are a Butler Creek spongy strap which takes a lot of the weight off your shoulder because the gun has got a little bit of weight to it, it's not a heavy barrel but it's a medium barrel, certainly heavier than most 2.2 rimfire barrels. And the other thing is the scope, it's actually quite a cheap BSA Sweet 17 scope three and a half to 12 by 40 so it's not massive magnification hasn't got a huge end <clears throat> I've had scopes 56 mil at the end and I've had some crazy scopes but to me this is a, just a nice affordable very clear and very accurate scope hasn't let me down yet this thing on the top is a bullet drop compensator goes from 100 yards up to 250 yards which really is your probably you know that's your effective range um, <clears throat> what you do you set your sights at 100 yards say you're going to shoot something at approximately 150 yards you would dial this up to 150 it would adjust the crosshairs ensuring that your shot went where the crosshairs are pointing to be honest, I don't use the bullet drop compensator. I just compensate manually. Um, once you've got used to the gun, you can do that. This strange attachment on the top is actually for a Cluson lamp, million candle power lamp. And when I'm out on a night shooting foxes, I tend to go alone, keep everything nice and quiet. Uh, screw the lamp on the top to see a fox drop the bipod lie down put the lamp off squeak the fox comes in flick the lamp on bang the majority of my shooting with this gun is done during the day I tend to reserve the 2-2 for nighttime shooting when I'm lamping and you tend to get a, a shorter exposure time on your targets so having a semi-auto 2-2 is pretty good for lamping because you can just go bang, 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 bang. Whereas with this, it's all about long range, accurate sniping. Um, as I said before, I tend to just get myself on a grassy knoll, facing a huge bank side, totally overpopulated by rabbits, and I'll select the targets to take out. And this does it very efficiently. Gonna do a couple of accuracy tests now. Basically just shooting small stones in my garden, approximately 40, 45 yards away. Um, just to let, just to show you how accurate it is. If you want to check out the proper accuracy of it, there's some videos down the right hand side here. Um, there should be one in the related videos called 0.22 versus 0.17 HMR. And that's a video I've done. It shows the difference in the power of the 2.2 subsonic, 2.2 supersonic and also the 1.7 HMR supersonic ballistic tips on a range of targets, fruit and veg and bottles of water and so on. It also has a bit of accuracy at the end. There's also other videos where I'm blowing up fruit and vegetables and so on with this. It's, it's good for blowing stuff up. I find if I shoot rats or squirrels, uh, you find out with this that there's not much holding them together they tend to just explode for people who have no idea or are just interested in possibly getting a 1.7 that is the bullet it's actually a tiny little bullet the diameter of it is less than a 1.77 bullet that you uh, sorry the 1.77 pellet that you would fire out of an air gun a little bit longer than a 177 pellet and it's also got a ballistic tip 
The cartridge here, which propels the projectile, is actually a 2-2 Magnum cartridge, which is necked down for this tiny little bullet. So whereas your 2-2 Magnum would be firing perhaps a 40 grain bullet, this fires a 17 grain bullet. So obviously it's going a hell of a lot faster. Hasn't got the impact short range, it, ha well, it certainly hasn't got the welly behind it, i.e. the weight behind it that the 2-2 Magnum has, but once you get to range, this keeps its power much better than the 2-2 Magnum because of the fact that it's moving so quickly when it hits its target this bullet explodes if you're shooting small vermin, rats and squirrels they explode as well shooting rabbits, all the energies imparted in the rabbit so say you don't get a perfect kill shot which is you know in the heart, in the head say you hit it from behind under the ribs or something or in the back there's so much energy released by this tiny little bullet that you get an instant kill which to me is paramount that's very very important <clears throat> you've got to respect the target that you're shooting at you have to ensure that you're taking every precaution to kill it with one shot so it doesn't suffer the last thing you want is for your target to get away wounded this bullet isn't to be confused with the 0.17 Mac 2, which is an ordinary 2.2 LR cartridge, neck down for the small bullet. This is an extended cartridge for the 2.2 Magnum, neck down for the 1.7. There's a rabbit down there in the centre of the frame, just hopping up next to the fence. It's approximately 150, 160 yards away, and for this particular gun, that's not a problem. Shot loads of rabbits at this sort of distance. Obviously you want to make sure that the gun's firing accurately before you take your shot, but um, not a problem. Another way to demonstrate how much energy is released when this gun is fired is to fire it into a body of water. I'll fire it in that sunny patch in the middle of the screen here. Here we go. Quite a lot of water displacement there. Alright, there's a tiny little stone in the middle of the screen there. I'll have a shot at that. It's approximately 40 yards or so. I think there's actually another stone just off to the left of that route there. Yep, that's another stone just off to the left of it. So I'll also have a go at that as well. Spot on. So in summary, would I recommend the Anschutz 5717? Yes. Might not be to everybody's budget. I think this was roughly 600 quid when I bought it. You can get CZs uh, a lot cheaper. To me, they don't feel or look as nice. Obviously, the look's not that important. But um, I do really like the feel of this gun and also the length of it. You know, when the silencer's off, it looks absolutely tiny. Quite a short silencer. Obviously the one drawback is because the barrel is cut so short you can't get like a, a reflex suppressor i.e. like a T4 or a T8 that slides back down over the barrel because you've only got about two and a half inches of barrel sticking out beyond the wood here. Not enough room to put a, a T8 or a T4 on. Accuracy wise, very accurate. Um, it's really never failed us. 
uh, if I do miss, it's down to pilot error. It's, <laughs> it's not down to the gun. The bullet always goes straight. I tend not to shoot things at crazy distances, like you, you see in other videos on YouTube. Um, there's just no point. The chances of missing, or you know, at worst, wounding your target, increases with distance. So most of my shots with this tend to be between 40 and 150 yards. Obviously, the 150 yards, or any, really anything over 100 yards, I would be lying down with the bipod out. Most of the probably sub 50 yards shots. I would be standing over the tops of walls, resting on fences, or possibly kneeling. Thanks for watching this review of the Anschutz 1517.17 HMR rifle. I've had it for about five or six years now, and I absolutely love this rifle to bits. It'll take foxes just as easily as it takes rats, providing you hit them in the right place. <clears throat> and with this, it's really all about accuracy, sniping, possibly at long range, but accuracy nonetheless, and also humane killing of your target. The last thing you want is to shoot something with a caliber that will not kill the target. This ensures that rabbits, hares, foxes hit in the right place are killed straight away, which to me is extremely important hate to think that anything's going to get away wounded and touch wood with this nothing has if you want to see some more of my videos I've done sh rabbit shooting guide videos and also woodland hunting tips uh, as well as comparisons between the 2.2 and the 1.7 uh, accuracy and also blown up fruit and vegetables with the 1.7 as well uh, down the right hand side here there's a playlist I think it's called shooting and vermin control that's mine uh, also in the related videos some of those will be mine as well check them out if you like it give it a thumbs up if you don't like it what the hell are you doing watching <laughs>